Ian came when we got the promotion, but such I've known for a lot of years, you know, because I had him at Palace and I used to spend a lot of time with him down there on the training ground here. And we had some really good players there and he's an out and out winner. Anyhow, he'd, uh, I'd always stayed in touch with him and Mitchell was here, Mitchell Thomas, was who I'd brought in from, uh, from Luton. Mitchell, Mitch was his mate, so I used to stay in touch. Now, Ian had gone up to Celtic and it hadn't worked out there. And I just having a conversation with Mitch one day, I said, how's, uh, how's Satch doing? Bit flat at him in a gaff, you know, daddy, daddy, daddy. I said, well, tell him if he wants to come and play here, he can't do any time. So that's how it started. He says, you mean that? I said, I do. I said, tell him to give me a ball. So I spoke to him and this and that and the other, and that's how it started. Anyhow, it took a lot of uh, putting together because uh, he, had his, he had other commitments as well, you know, television and all sorts of stuff. But we'd done the deal, we got the deal, and... We managed somehow to keep it quiet, which really in Burnley you should be awarded a VC for. Yeah. But nevertheless, that's what happened. And uh, of course, when, when they called the press conference and they came on the news, Ray Ingleby uh, and I think Cathy pick up, I'm not sure, but Ray went through to Preston to meet him on the train and bring him in. And it, it was just like a madhouse. But it was a fantastic uh, thing, and it gave all the players a fantastic lift. And that was the year we got promoted. And he scored a couple of important goals for us, you know, and gave everybody a big lift. And it was a really happy time, and the lads were flying, playing really, really well. Oh, horrendous. I never expected it. I didn't see it coming because I was too busy trying to keep the team in the championship. And we got to two games from the end of the season. We beat Wimbledon at home and we beat somebody else somewhere and we managed to stay up. And it was a bank holiday and I went through, it was a Monday, I went through to meet the chairman at his then business, GTEC in uh, Blackburn. And we're having this conversation. And I was knackered to be fair. And he just said, what about you, Stan? And I thought... So I didn't really see it coming and... Uh, nah, not nice. I've had some bad ones as well, you know, where we get beat six nights off Man Cities and things like that. that. And all the, all the crowd giving you, like, rock all and one thing and another. But, of course, that goes with the territory. I mean, Sheffield Wednesday were relegated and they came for an end-of-season uh, relegation party and scored about seven against us or something because the lads had turned it in, hadn't they? They were, they were on the beach somewhere. Ridiculous. Yeah. But, all the, you know, so there's always a downside as well. But for... for um, Overall, uh, I certainly uh, left Burnley in a hell of a better state than what I found it, believe me. A hundred, hundred times better state than I found it. Well, it was well publicised in the respect that uh, he had a go at Gary Megson, he had a go at me, he's had a go at most people, Wally, Wally Downs, who's a good coach, a well, good lad, he worked for me at Burnley as well. But you find that the majority of people will put up, put up with them because they have to, have to do the deal with them. But I don't think there'll be a queue of friends around the place so far. I do a bit for, yeah, I do a little bit for Sunderland, for Stevie. You know, they send me to. Well, I've done it, you know, when he was at Birmingham. And I used to go abroad quite a lot for him then. And then uh, it just, when he went to Wigan, and I'd done there for him as well. And of course, when he went to Sunderland. So it's just been a, a natural progression thing, really. So I haven't spoken to him for probably three months. Then he might ring me six times a day or something. And he just, but he'll have been busy, as you see, he signed a lot of players and this and that and the other. So I enjoy it. It gives me something to do Saturday afternoons. It gives me something to do in midweek. I still like going watching footy, you know. It's what I do. somebody asked me, I could help them, yeah, big style, if they wanted me to. It's, um, football's kind of, it changes, you know, because not so much the players, a lot of the, it's different now with players as well, but often the, the, the chairmans and boards of directors, they want experience, so they go for experienced guys. And a lot of them want young guys, so what you find in now, certainly in the championship, there are a lot of young first time round, 
or near enough first time round, man. Certainly first time round in the championship managers. Yet the most successful managers are the older ones. So I tell you something. So if you get an olden with a youngin, and the olden takes a step back here, and the youngin can put his pride to one side, if you like, and for a little, do your own way. But if there's a problem, ask. Well, if you do that way, those are the options. If you do that way, that, 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 that. So, I think there's a place for that. But that has to come from the beholder. That has to come from the guy who has the job.